Hi, this is the same example from the previous video. Um, graph the vector function 2 times cosine t plus 2 times sine t times t. Now, uh, first of all, there's three ways to represent this vector function. The first is in the, the standard uh, component form, um, but also you can write it in the ijk form. That would be 2 cosine t times vector unit vector i plus 2 times sine t uh, times uh, unit vector j plus t times unit vector k. There's no real advantage to writing it that way, but sometimes you'll see it written this way in the book, so I wanted to point that out. Um, now, in my opinion, the most useful way to represent a, par a, um, a vector function is in parametric form. So we know that um, if... Uh, if this is a position vector, then the x the x component is just the x coordinate, and the second component is just the y coordinate, and then the third component is just the z component. So you can write this in parametric form: x equals two times cosine t, and then y equals two times sine t, and then z equals t. Um, you, you can think of parametric, as long as you're dealing with position functions, which is almost always what we're doing in, in this course, then um, there's no difference between a parametric uh, set of, of equations and the, the vector function. It's just think of it like a different notation. It's two, two different ways of writing the same concept. Um, and parametric functions, I think, are easier to visualize because um, imagine that you have some particle that's in in three-dimensional space and it's being pushed and pulled by three different forces and so you could think of it like um there's a force that's acting on this particle horizontally and and we can define that force as being two cosine t so that tells you that well we know cosine bounces up and down between negative and positive one so i'm times it by two so that means that in the x-coordinate, in the horizontal direction, that particle is just bouncing back and forth between negative 2 and positive 2. All right, now, okay, so uh, the y-coordinate is 2 sine t. Um, in three-dimensional space, we like to put the, uh, the x uh, facing that direction, y is facing uh, that direction, and so imagine x and y-coordinates are being laid flat, and then z is the vertical, so that means that that the y equals 2 sine t, we have that y coordinate is just bouncing, uh, uh, I guess, um, towards you and away from you, uh, back and forth from negative 2 to positive 2. And then z equals t, that tells you that the vertical coordinate z is just rising. It's just going up, 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 right there. Um, so that, that's the way to, to visualize this. Um, Another way to visualize parametric uh, function uh, sets a set of parametric equations is um, an etch a sketch. Let me get uh, I've got an etch a sketch here. Okay, here here's here's an etch a sketch. So you probably had this toy when you were a kid, or you've probably seen it. So you have the the one button on the left that controls the the left and right motion. The button on the right uh, controls the vertical motion, so that would be like your, like your Z. And then imagine there's a third uh, dial that controls the, uh, a, a th the, the point going forwards and backwards in time. So then, so think of like parametric equations as like a three-dimensional edge of sketch. So back to our, uh, our picture. So, so you can think of it like X. I'm just rotating that dial back and forth between negative 2 and positive 2. And at the same time, I'm rotating another dial back and forth in the y direction between negative 2 and positive 2. And then in the z direction, I'm controlling a dial that's just making that, that point go up and up and up and up, and it never goes down. All right, so, so that, that's the way to visualize these. So now, um, uh, it, you, you might be able to, from this point, you might be able to just imagine what this graph looks like. Maybe start with t being 0. You don't have to plot too many points, but let's just do 0 just to get us started. So when t is 0, we know that cosine of 0 is 1 times 2 is 2. 
uh, when t is 0, sine of 0 is 0 times 2 is 0, and z uh, is 0 as well. So um, we're starting off um, x being 2 right there, um, y is 0, and z is 0. And then because the x uh, position is just bouncing forwards and backwards between negative 2 and positive 2, um, uh, it, it, and you could think of it like, you know, the, imagine the unit circle. So X is just rotating. Y is rotating as well. Y is just bouncing back and forth between negative 2 and positive 2. But Z just keeps going up. And so it, it'll, it'll create a spiral. It's just making that circle. X and just bouncing between negative 2, positive 2. Y bouncing between negative 2, positive 2. And Z is just going up and up and up. Okay, uh, that, now you can plot more points if, if you need to, to, to get uh, a better sense of the direction and so forth. Oh, draw arrows to show what's, what's happening there. Um, so that, that's, that's one way to do it. Now you can also do this same graph using uh, projections. Um, and especially if you're not good at visualizing things in three dimensions, um, projections might be the way to go. So um, think of a, pro a projection sort of like a shadow. Um, and so what you do is you start with Z being zero and you only look at the X and Y axes. And so let's just uh, imagine that three-dimensional surface. We lay it down flat and we look only at the X and Y. Okay, and then Z is just automatically zero. So we're, we're projecting this, this spiral shape, we're projecting it onto the XY plane. And so z is just automatically 0. x equals 2 cosine t, y equals 2 sine t. And then it's, it's essentially it's, it's a two-dimensional uh, situation from here. All right, so at time 0, you can see cosine 0 is 1 times 2. So we start off at x is 2 and, uh, and, and y is 0. And then um, you know about the unit circle, and so you can see as t increases, cosine goes down, sine goes up. And so eventually, when we get to pi over 2, when t is pi over 2, sine is 1, cosine is 0. So we have the arrow going this direction. And then it's just, and, and that's why it's 2. And then it just keeps going at, at pi. When t is pi, cosine is negative 1, sine is 0. Um, and it just continues to rotate. And so that is the projection of that, of that spiral um, in, in two dimensions. So, so imagine that you take this three-dimensional um, surface and you look at it straight from above, you'll see just a circle right there. Um, and then you can repeat the projection. Um, so, so hold on. So this is the XY plane. Okay, so now let's do the projection on, um, let's do the XZ plane. So in other words, Y is going to be zero. So we have X is two, oop, battery's low. Um, X equals two cosine th uh, T, and Z is just T, because we have to refer back to the original question here, Z equals z equals t right there okay so um and, and then y is just constantly zero uh, so um what does that look like well here's here's x here's z so so imagine we're looking at that three-dimensional surface but we're looking at it from this uh this direction right here so we're just looking at the x and the z coordinates and so then, um, uh, when t is 0, x is 2, just like before, um, and then z is 0. Now, um, as t increases, like for example, when t is pi over 2, um, we've just got that cosine wave, uh, but, but z is now increasing. So it'll look like this. If, if you want to add another point, um, we have x and z. So we have when t is 0, x is 2, z is 0. Oh, my z's just look like 2, so I'll put it, uh, a line there. So at, for example, pi over 2, x is now 0. 
but z is pi over 2. So we have that cosine wave, but it's going up sideways. Pi, pi, z is pi over 2 right there. And then it just goes to, go, the cosine goes to negative. And so it's just going to be a sideways cosine wave like that. And they'll just keep going up forever. And you can see that uh, three-dimensionally, that's creating the spiral right here. Okay, and then the, there's one more projection um, on the um, yz plane. Okay, so here x is 0, uh, y is 2 sine t, and then z equals t. So um, here's y, here's z. So now we're looking at that three-dimensional set of axes, we're looking at it from the x, uh, like the x-axis is pointing straight at us. And so we're starting off, in this case, when um, t is 0, you can see y is 0, and z is 0. So we're starting here off at the point 0, 0, and then x is 0, of course. Uh, it, when t is like pi over 2, y is now 2, z is uh, pi over 2, and so it just, uh, Z just keeps going up and up and up, and Y is just following that sine wave pattern. So, so Y will go out to two, and then it'll go back to zero, and then go to negative two, and, and so on and so on and so forth. Okay, uh, so, um, so that, that's how the spiral looks uh, um, from one set of of, of axes or from one plane at a time all right so lastly let's let's plot this on mathematica so so here we have mathematica um i already to save a little time i installed the the scc package um i i already typed in axes 3d uh from negative 5 to positive 5 because it makes it a little bit easier to to to, to see what's going on here let me zoom this in a little bit let me make this a little bit bigger too okay there we go all right so um so now you uh you go down and use the parametric plot so i'm calling it b so i can put these the, the axes together in a minute but if you just type parametric plot 3d um you're just uh you don't have to write x equals two cosine just two cosine t y equals 2 cosine t or 2 sine t excuse me but you don't need the y just 2 sine t and then comma and then t put those in curly brackets uh, and then it's just understood it's x y and z and then comma and then your uh your boundaries for t so i so t going from 0 to 2 pi is all you really need because that's one full period for sine and cosine but to see the spi more of the spiral i thought i'd go 0 to 6 pi and then it looks like this you can see the spiral right here um you can see we're starting off with t being zero cosine is or, or x which is two cosine t equals two y is zero and then it just circular pattern and z just keeps going up um, now when you put them together with the show command you have show a comma b and it looks like this oh wait hold on here that that's only Let's try that again. So I, I want to see more. There we go. There's more of the spiral right there. Okay, so we're starting off, notice x being 2 and y being 0, and it just spirals around. Now, let, let's turn this around a little bit. Mathematica lets you move things around. So if you if you move that z-axis down, you'll be able to see the projection. Um, and so we're looking at this from the top, and you can see you've just got that circle. Oop. Okay, and then if you want to look at the other projections, let's go back to the original. And then if you want to look at the XZ projection, let's see if I can turn this here. It's kind of tricky to turn. But the, uh, here we go. Okay, so you can see here you've got that XZ. You can see that cosine wave. Um, and then if you look at this from the Y, the Y, ooh, no, the YZ plane. If I can get it to turn here, all right. Well, well, it's 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 not quite turning, but you you would see, you you would see the, the that sine wave. 